Hello everyone. Um, welcome back. Welcome back to Matt Opens Toys. Um, sorry for all of the loud sounds in the background right now. Uh, yeah, so I missed last week, um, but I am back this week for a new stream. Um, you know, we had our little I had a little break week uh, last week because we were having some friends uh, come in from out of town. Um, and we spent the weekend going to Sherwood Forest Fair. Uh, this is like a, a renaissance fair that is just uh, about a half hour, 25 minutes or so outside of Austin. Um, we had been there once before a couple years ago. Uh, obviously, we did not attend during 2020, but we had made plans to go back to it. So we were spending last week pretty much just, um, you know, cleaning our house, getting it somewhat presentable for some guests, uh, had a really good time. It was a, uh, a fun little jaunt out there. Um, you know, the Sherwood Forest Fair was uh, a lot of fun. I uh, drank a fair amount of alcohol throughout the day. I, I believe if you were to ask my wife by the end of the day, I had gotten perhaps a little rowdy. Um, but yeah, you know, overall had a really good time. Um, got a chance to see some friends that we hadn't seen in quite some time, really. Um, but that was the the preparation for that was a little bit of why we hadn't um, or why I hadn't personally done any streaming last week. But I'm back. I wanted to get back into the swing of things, especially since I was just now kind of experimenting with this new setup. So, uh, welcome back. This is Matt Opens Toys, the Twitch stream channel where I go and I open toys, normally ones that I've just kind of had sitting around. Um, this week, since it's the last uh, Wednesday in May, it's Wednesday, my dudes, uh, Wednesday being my traditional streaming day, um, but this is the last Wednesday in May. We're rounding out the, uh, the month time really time goes by so quickly. Um, but last Wednesday in May. And so I wanted to do a little stream and I thought, what should we do for a theme? Well, I got a new item in, um, that I had pre-ordered a while back this week that seemed timely in a certain in a certain respect very timely uh and i noticed that i had a couple other things that were also marvel marvel legends in particular uh we've opened marvel legends on the stream before uh in particular we had opened the uh, house of x powers of x wave of x-men marvel legends uh this is more of a, a random kind of grab bag assortment of different marvel legends that uh had just kind of been sitting around collecting dust, and I thought I was overdue to open some of them. Um, some of them I've had, actually, for at least a few weeks. Uh, though I would say the the grand centerpiece that we'll be opening today is uh, it's a pretty recent addition. Um, but yeah, you can see here, centered up in our frame, is um, <laughs> what many had uh, predicted, perhaps fairly so, um, would be what toy collectors uh, affectionately refer to as a shelf warmer. A shelf warmer, um, even though it does not generate any heat, is any kind of toy that, generally speaking, there is going to be very low demand for. Um, and so they tend to just sit around. They sit around on the shelves of various retailers waiting to be clearanced out. Some of them, even when they're uh, clearanced out, they still don't sell, and so they just sit there on the shelf, keeping the shelf warm. Um, it was hard to say exactly. I mean, I think, for one thing, sometimes female action figures don't do that well. Um, sometimes, you know, sometimes movie action figures don't necessarily do particularly well. Um, I have to admit, I, I don't know. I don't necessarily have any particular drive to see um shang chi necessarily but i kind of thought that this would be uh kind of fun or funny 
to have an Aquafina uh, action figure. This is a uh, character from the upcoming film Shang Chi: um, The Legend of the Ten Rings, which is a um, Marvel Cinematic Universe release. Um, but there's a character in that movie that is going to be portrayed by the actress comedian uh, Aquafina. Um, I'm trying to think what I'm familiar with her from. I've never seen like uh, Nora from Queens or anything like that. I'm just, I think I'm mostly just kind of familiar with her from existing in the grand ether of things um, as a performer, actress, even though, again, I don't really necessarily have a lot of uh, particular familiarity. Uh, She seems kind of funny in the trailer for this Shang-Chi movie. I don't know Marvel's Katie. Um, I don't know if Katie is a character from the Shang-Chi comic. I mean, I'm I, I'm a Marvel fan. I would say my biggest uh, my biggest Marvel comic fandom would be the X Men. Uh, I really right now I read Runaways as well. Uh, there's a fantastic Runaways book that's being published right now. That is written by Rainbow Rowell. Rowell? I'm not sure how to pronounce that last name. I'm probably getting it wrong. Um, But it is just a tremendous, tremendous run. And I would say, you know, a a worthy successor that perhaps has even... Oh, hey. Well, thank you for for watching and not listening. Uh, So far at it hasn't been maybe the most visually interesting stream so far, and I'm still showing zero viewers, but um, yeah. So I was just talking about this. Um, there will be more exciting figures that I will be getting to. This is kind of decidedly not necessarily a super exciting figure, which is why I was referring to it as being potentially a shelf warmer. Um, but yeah, yeah. Uh, I was also just recommending a comic that I'm reading, uh, but let's uh, let's get Katie open, and uh, then we can move on to some of the other uh, Marvel <laughs> and continues to be here. Um, yeah, we're gonna open up Katie, and then we're gonna take a look at this figure, and then from there we're gonna move on to what I think are gonna be several. Whoa, more exciting entries in tonight's um, opening. So there's our packaging, kind of standard Marvel Legends packaging. Um, This is interesting, Uh, this little creature, uh, which looks to be some kind of um, strange, headless fantasy uh, creature that I suppose is going to be uh, featuring into into the film in some way. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> uh, no articulation in this. Um, again, this has all the makings of kind of your standard, like, Tribble, Ewok, Wookiee, Porg, um, furry, uh, child-friendly, uh, fantasy animal thing. <laughs> um, the the reviews are in. People hate it. Um, Ryan definitely hates it. There's like some nice little paint effects there on the wings. Um, I think the lack of a head is a pretty like upsetting design choice overall. I don't really know why you would do that. I think a head tends to, uh, generally speaking, work in most cute things' favor. Um, I need to move my keyboard. Give me one second. All right. I have moved my keyboard out of my way so I can uh, uh, get a a better view here of our, uh, or get in a little bit closer to the camera while we examine this, uh, this Aquafina action figure. She's got a little bit of a, of a hunch by default. Um, she's a little kind of crouched over. Um, she's wearing little 
pants underneath this dress. Um, I think one of the issues that you see sometimes with um, female figures that can be off-putting for people is when they are wearing kind of loose or flowing garments. Um, the tendency tends to be that uh, you'll find that will hamper articulation. They also themselves would tend to be featuring uh, characters that aren't necessarily um, doing the most action-packed stuff in the um, in the films that they may be featured in. Um, this is just a generalization. I mean, I, again, I haven't seen this movie. I don't even... I mean, I'll probably see it. It's not a movie that I was, like, dying to see. Um, the likeness for Aquafina, I would say, is probably pretty decent. Um, there's some good texturing and detailing with regards to the costume itself. So, I mean, it's not bad. Um, again, I kind of got this more out of just the novelty of a uh, of an Aquafina action figure more than anything else. Uh, kind of the same... Uh, philosophy that I had <laughs> or motivation with regards to the novelty factor of having like a uh, a Billie Eilish etc cetera, etc cetera. Um, but yeah I mean uh, kind of standard Marvel legend uh, I think she's on the shorter side I've seen some people do some comparison and uh, she even in comparison to a lot of other even the live action female figures that they've come out with in the last few years. Um, she runs on the shorter, smaller side, um, which maybe that's just accurate to Aquafina. I don't know. Aquafina, chime in. Let us know. How tall are you? How do you feel about having an action figure? Wouldn't it be interesting if this was a um, an interview show and I had like famous celebrity guests that were chatting with me while I was opening these toys? Uh, it would probably enhance the appeal of this sort of thing for outside viewers and people that aren't just me trying to work through um, opening the toys that exist in my life. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's uh, an inauspicious start. She comes with... Uh, <laughs> she... she, she <sighs> Look, I'm, I'm not going to draw any kind of comparisons to Milan, uh, as is being suggested in our chat um yeah yeah i mean there's you got a quiver you got a bow i'm guessing the character probably uses these things um they kind of did a thing where there's like the full quiver and then there's a single arrow uh this is probably one of the better bow and arrow sets that they've produced recently um, it's a modern toy, so, you know, got to throw in your hands. Um, but yeah, overall, I mean, not the most exciting toy in the world. Uh, I don't think she's bad by any stretch of the imagination, but, you know, it's also not the kind of thing that people are going to get too excited about. Um, I'll go ahead and I'll leave her there uh, and we'll move on. This is a, uh, another Marvel legend that I ordered a while back. This was kind of a, uh, I don't know why they made this. I don't know why they made a Firestar. Um, it's like a a general retailer exclusive kind of thing. So it was available through like Hasbro Pulse. It was just one of these things where as opposed to like being part of any wave releases or Build-A-Figure waves, um, they occasionally do like one-off releases of characters um, that I guess maybe otherwise wouldn't really have any kind of representation. Uh, in a certain way, I'm imagining that this is probably coming hot on the, uh, tail of the recent, uh, Spider-Man retro wave because of, uh, Firestar's featuring in, <laughs> you know, these are such, this is such brutal commentary on these characters uh uh, discount phoenix i think that that's a little unfair now granted i believe she is um a mutant um but she was featured in spider-man and his amazing friends uh i do have a little bit of familiarity with this character because a couple years back um i like this insert that they have um 
Is this maybe a direct reference to the Spider-Man and his amazing friends kind of thing? Um, you don't tend to see too much of this from Marvel Legends, but um, a nice little fully painted insert. Again, maybe a direct reference to Spider-Man and his amazing friends. Uh, I'm familiar with Firestar. She, I, I don't want to talk out of turn. Or end up being wrong. I could very well be wrong. I apologize in advance of if I am. But uh, I had read Kurt Busiek's um, run on the Avengers maybe about a year or two ago. Uh, it was one of the first things that I took advantage of when I subscribed to Marvel Unlimited. Uh, and Firestar is one of the characters that features in that um, as sort of a promotion from her participation in New Warriors. So she was a New Warriors character in the comics. Um, in terms of television, again, she was one of the three main characters of Spider-Man and his amazing friends. Um, along with Iceman. So it was like Iceman, Spider-Man, and Firestar. So Fire, Ice, and Spiders, the three... Um, you know, primordial elements that create all of creation, uh, as we all know, as is taught in American schools. Um, yeah, so kind of a weird, random character, strange, strange uh, choice, because although, again, I do have some familiarity with her um, here and there, uh, I actually enjoyed her in that Avengers run that I was talking about quite a bit. She was maybe one of my uh, favorite supporting characters, even though they kind of... I think she and uh, Vance Astrovic, Justice, um, they go like undercover in this weird church for like a good little chunk of that run. So they kind of write her out um, for a little bit. Uh yeah, but I, I enjoyed her in that. This is not the costume that she appears in. Um, it's funny because her um, her reaction to the costume is kind of similar to uh, the character beat in The Boys for Starlight uh, of her being kind of put off by the idea of uh, it being a little flashier, showing kind of skin kind of stuff. Um yeah, you can see as a comparison, Katie is just a little bit shorter. I don't think she's that much shorter, though. Uh, you have two portraits that Firestar comes with. Uh, she also comes with her little furry friend here. Um, a kind of, I guess, a somewhat cute Pomeranian. Um, there's head articulation. A nice touch. Uh... See, when you have a head, you can include head articulation. So these are our, uh, our little furry companions. And I would have to say that the, the little Pomeranian's a little bit, a little bit cuter. Um, in part because, yes, uh, it has a head. I don't know the name of that dog. Again, probably maybe a more specific reference to um, uh, the Spider-Man and the, uh, his amazing friend's origin of this character. Um but you have two portraits. Uh, it looks like there's a slight difference with regards to the mask on one of the heads, in addition to, of course, the uh, the hair sculpt being a little bit more uh, active, something where she's, uh, you know, you could pose her in flight. There's this thing, I don't know if it's like hot air rises or what, but like I feel like a lot of these old um, fire characters um, were typically given flight even though it doesn't necessarily like there's no reason if you get lit on fire it doesn't mean you can fly as i understand it i guess i've never personally been on fire but no no realistic depictions that i've ever seen uh, have people that can fly just bursting into flame um but you know that posing this is uh this is one of the more modern bucks as i've mentioned before buck terminology this is uh the overall body sculpt for um modern marvel legend figures um 
it, it allows for pretty dynamic posing. Um, the inclusion of the open hands, the fire effects, the little dog, uh, all of it is pretty cool. Um, I actually, too, I think, you know, out, out of the box, she looks a lot cooler than she did when she was still in the package. Um, I would also say that uh, the dynamic hair for like the action-y flight pose uh, head is maybe a little bit more um, exciting in general. There's kind of a, uh, a vacant expression to the hair down version of her. Um, not to be rude, I'm sorry, Firestar. I'm not not trying to diss you. Um, I was trying to compliment you as a figure because honestly, I do think you're actually even a little bit cooler than uh, I anticipated. Um, if you ever played Maximum Carnage, the video game, um, I believe she also appears in there as like a support character that can come in and like shoot fire beams and stuff like that. So, you know, I think she just kind of has some of that some of those kind of standard human torchy sort of flight fire power kind of things. Um, I, as I mentioned, I mean, I'm familiar with the character to a certain extent from that Avengers run. I really enjoyed her in that. Um, I don't have a great reason why I got this particular figure, except I thought she looked kind of cool. And again, yes, she actually is. She's pretty cool. Uh, poses a little bit more dynamically, looks a little better than you might um, than I initially really thought. I also do appreciate that this little dog has the, uh, the head articulation as well. Um, in the background of this, you can see I actually had acquired, um, invincible action figures since the last time that I had recorded, but we aren't opening those tonight. Tonight is about Marvel. Uh, so yeah, those are my first two for the evening. Uh, this one I had shown on stream before, but I'm going to go ahead and we're going to actually get this bad boy open. Uh, this is one of the deluxe releases that was another direct to, um, to novelty shop kind of things that came out. Uh, we all know him. We all love him. He was the star of, uh, uh, Marvel's Avengers, uh, Infinity War. And, um, you, I mean, does he need an introduction at this point? He's kind of become a meme and then gone beyond being a meme. Um, it is the chunky boy himself, uh, Mr. T. Hanos, the, the T. Hanos of fate, right? Um, no, but Thanos. I mean, what what introduction does Thanos need? The Mad Titan, um, one of the biggest jobbers in the Marvel comics, um, and I guess the culmination of ten years of movies for the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Yeah, I mean, I I like I like Thanos. I like him well enough. Um, he's a good he's a good you know villain to toss out. Um, again, in the comics, I think it's kind of to the point where, you know, he's been bested in the comics so many times that he's lost a little bit of impact. Um, he almost works a little bit better, I would say, as the, um, occasional anti-hero that they sometimes attempt to portray him as, um... I did a um, I did a D and D campaign several years ago, where there was some uh, artifacts that were a little bit, a tiny bit, uh, influenced by the um, concept of the Infinity Gems. Um, not terribly so. This is kind of neat. This is another one. You know, these these two, um Firestar and uh 
and Thanos, they both are including like these little illustrations. So this is like Thanos's throne, which, you know, it's kind of his whole deal of like, who's the boss, et cetera, et cetera. Um, so Thanos, yeah, uh, this is actually not the first, not the first Thanos figure that I had. Um, I did, I did complete the build a figure Thanos release that was uh, based off of his more contemporary appearance, uh, pretty much his costume from Jonathan Hickman's uh, Infinity, uh, which is a take on the um, on the classic. This is his uh, classic, dare I say, original costume. Uh, Thanos originated, I think, as like an Iron Man villain, um, and then. Jim Starlin kind of made him into a bigger deal um, doing the Infinity Saga about him courting death by assembling the stones and then uh, in the miniseries destroying half of life in the universe with a snap of the finger, which I thought was, I don't know, even the snap, the snap thing is so overdone. But this, uh, this figure itself actually has a direct reference to recreating the snap. It's just kind of a meme, right? It's, it's weird because I feel like the concept is that metaphorically you're trying to say that it's just a fundamentally easy thing for him to do, right? To say you can do it in like uh, the snap of your fingers. Like you're just saying that it's easy but it's become such like a literal thing like it they in the comic of course it's like a literal snap of the fingers um in the movie it's a literal snap of the fingers and it's funny because like even in avengers infinity war i watched a little bit of that recently just on a board day at home um gamora kind of talks about it you know, with him, if he were to have the fully assembled uh, Infinity Gauntlet, that it would be as easy as a snap of his finger to uh, to just wipe out half of all life in existence. But that's a metaphor. It's not. It's not literal. I mean, I don't. I don't think that it's originally meant to be literal. It's supposed to just say, hey, that's like an exceptionally easy thing to do, right? But again, I, I don't know. I don't know what it is. You know, people can't take subtlety. People can't see things as a metaphor. Is it just the visual? Um, I guess it's a compelling visual. You know, you take something that's metaphorical, you make it literal, I guess. The fact that it had power as a metaphor means that it's probably going to work pretty decently um, as an actual image so um yeah i mean i get it i get it and again the snap is a literal thing from the comic that he's um kind of most famously from um this again a pretty nice deluxe uh rendition of that classic thanos um the other thanos has a lot of like modern detailing and things like that um so they tend to do like little panels and seam lines. And then with the space characters, they just kind of give them like unnecessary little like glowy bits, I guess, to look kind of futuristic or spacey. Um, but back in the 70s or whatever, when these characters were just kind of making their initial debut, it was just kind of like, you know, people in just costumes, silly costumes. Um, but there's something really great about like those kind of silly, iconic costumes. Um, so I know that many people had been eagerly looking forward to this kind of release. Um, the build a figure they had released as kind of a deluxe Walmart exclusive version a little while back. Um, but this one, in addition to not being exclusive is that classic look, um, the heads, you can use the heads from some of the other Thanoses that they've released. I don't have those Thanoses, the Nosai on hand to do the head swaps. Um, it also comes with a alternative head. Um, let me swap it out real quick. 
so this alternative head portrait is um, a older grizzled Thanos. Uh, I think this appearance is based off of how he appears in um, Cosmic Ghost Rider because he's a uh, he's like an adoptive father to uh, or something like that. I don't know. Or Cosmic Ghost Rider is like his adoptive father. I don't know. I haven't read Cosmic Ghost Rider. Um, but you got that alternative portrait that's included with him here. Um, I think, ironically, that head, that appearance, he kind of, he's in that other more modern version of the costume that I was talking about before. So I've seen some people swap the head out for that older body. Um, I'll be inclined if I do decide to display him. Um, I think I'll stick with his uh, good old fashioned classic head. Um, yeah, Thanos, I mean, he's fun. Cringe boy, cringe beard. <laughs> um, he's an expressive character. Um, even though, again, he's like gone all around the bend to be a meme again. And I don't know. Um, he was effective in the movies. Effective enough. Uh, he was pretty good, I think, in uh, Infinity War. But Endgame and what they did with the character and kind of undercutting... I mean, they, they undercut a lot of the characters in Endgame, in my opinion. Um, I mean, obviously, Thanos was a lot more compelling in Infinity War. I mean, it was re it was really his movie. Um, and, I mean, uh, Josh Brolin, he did a good job. I don't know. I don't know what to tell you. Uh, he's fun in video games when they do video <laughs> games around him. Uh, this is... Our big, our big open for the evening. Um, MODOK, the mental organism designed only for killing. Only for killing, though. I mean, does does that track? He doesn't. He doesn't look particularly well designed, as far as the killing thing. Um, yeah, so this is a pretty new release. I mean, I think that some people have already, of course, done their um, their reviews and whatnot. People are always so fast about that, and then they all, like, pay money to get it early from China and just silly things that I am absolutely not willing to do. Um, but MODOK, yes. So MODOK, uh, in addition to this being a very recent release as far as the toy itself... Um, oh my goodness. MODOK also, just this past week, this last weekend, um, had his Hulu show that has premiered. Um, this is another uh, more deluxe release. They've been doing that, um, you know. For a little bit now. I would say maybe like the last year or two. They've been doing these um, deluxe releases. This one, uh, you could view it as sort of an update of the Build-A-Figure that Toy Biz put together. Um, which was often, you know, just very fondly regarded. Um, you can see the nature of the character and the bulk of the character made it so that He's not packaged really conventionally in the way that you would expect um, a Marvel legend to be. That's why they had the front illustration as opposed to just having him um, already assembled. Um, yeah, but there was a uh, Toy Biz build a figure that was kind of similar in scale, but um, like with. The classic build of figures and even with current build of figures um, a lot of the the basis of that is that they can offset the cost of manufacturing by including pieces of this figure um, that necessitate you buying the entire wave of figures so they can kind of uh, manage the costs a little bit better that way uh, sometimes produce these larger characters that 
would either need to be at a higher price point as this one was, or, um, you know, are just generally cost prohibitive. Um, so the original MODOK again was released as a build figure. Um, I have parts of that MODOK. I, I never put the whole thing together. Um, but this even goes a little bit above and beyond that original release um, by including an alternate portrait. So you got your choice of uh, just grimacing or, or yelling, firing off that mental destruction beam. Um, nice quality. I mean, the sculpt, I mean, he's an ugly character, obviously. Um, but the sculpt here and the painting detailing on it, I mean, it's all pretty cool. Um, yeah, but uh, Modoc just had like a, a weird new like robot chicken-esque um, stop motion animated stop motion slash 3d animated tv show that just premiered uh on hulu as a hulu original um it's actually produced by the studio that produces robot chicken um so you know good timing as far as that like the release of this um this does not match exactly his appearance in that but this is just kind of your classic comic appearance for modok um the Modoc in the TV show is voiced by Patton Oswalt. Patton Oswalt? Walt? Does it? Is there? A, is it a sharp T? I think it is. Um, uh, who does a, a fine job? Um, it's a comedic performance, obviously. I mean, Modoc, I think, is an inherently kind of ridiculous character, and so um, you know they kind of play into the ridiculousness of the character, but also while um while kind of keeping a real pathos to the character in a way that uh kind of takes advantage of um his inherent ridiculousness oh my goodness did i uh all right whoa i gotta be careful there's an order to these things as far as the assembly were to go um so yeah you want to click that little hair piece into place before you clip the front of his body. Oh my gosh. Oh. Snap, snap, snap. Come on. Come on. Bear with me a second, folks. Um, yeah, but I've watched a few episodes of, uh, of the MODOK TV show uh, already, and uh, it's pretty funny. It's pretty funny. I, I have to say it's like a little bit... Mm, it's a little more broad. Um than some of the comedy that I like. And it's also a little bit more, um, I wouldn't say it's like overly violent, but I mean, they play into that aspect of it. Um, you know, uh, like I said, it's produced by the same studio that does Robot Chicken. I think there's an element of that humor um, that pervades it. Am I damaging this thing by not building it correctly? Um, God, it really seems like it. Okay. So what the heck? Uh huh. Okay, I think I need to get his little like headband in. Okay. So don't put it into the back spot. Put it into the front spot. I got. I gave myself a little bit of a stress crease on that. Uh, I think it's mostly not going to be visible, and thankfully it didn't like snap or anything like that. But that was me. That's user error. Nothing to say. Uh, with regards to the design or build quality of this. I mean, it seems, again, fairly solidly built. Um, I think I want the... I don't know. I think maybe I'll put on the uh, the cranky, stanky face instead of the um, yelling face. Um, it doesn't seem like it'll be that hard to swap out the faces when you are interested in doing so. Uh, I saw some... I saw one or two people that were just talking about... Um, <clears throat> withholding the placement of the jet into the bottom portion because apparently once you've placed that it's uh, uh, fairly difficult to remove the little um, blast off effects um, but yeah I've watched about three well I've watched two episodes 
and uh, I started a third, but I had started a third after work and after eating dinner, and I'm getting older, and I fall asleep easily while I'm watching stuff. It's a sad, sad fate. Um, but there you go. There he is, nice and fully assembled, the pretty, the pretty lad himself, the mental organism designed only for killing. Somebody designed this? If you were going to design an organism that was strictly for killing, is this what you would design? Aquafina, since I still have you on the line. Um, yeah, I don't know. I, I mean, I think obviously that's some of the inherent comedy of the character is that the idea that anybody would be designing anything that would look like this just in general like who would nobody would i mean a mad scientist i suppose i kind of don't know i kind of don't know um that's fun that's fun i kind of don't really know like his deal in the comics i know his visuals um i think he was maybe a uh he was like a Captain America or an Iron Man villain, you know. Just one of those really ridiculous, like, 60s, 70s creations. Um, this is the little... This is the little blast-off piece that I was talking about. Uh, some people were saying they had kind of held off on plugging in the blast-off piece. I don't know why. I mean, he's not going to stand up on his own without it. Um... So there's the little blast off piece. Let's plug his little chair in. Yeah. This is so that he may support himself. Yeah. Um, again, I mean, he comes with an alternate portrait. He comes with some alternate hands. Um, Currently, he just has his uh, his fingers splayed in order to show off his uh, his beautiful manicure. Um, but good articulation. I mean, it, the character design is as such that, to a certain extent, certain kinds of articulation aren't really going to do you much good um, when you're about eighty to ninety percent giant head. You know, you don't need to be the most well-articulated guy in the world, but they actually gave probably more articulation than is strictly necessary. Um, at the same time, it does let you kind of get some expressive poses out of, you know, out of this guy. If you wanted to do like a, a shocked or like getting attacked kind of deal, you can, you can have him do like the full spread eagle splay and whatnot. Um, you can swap that out. Um, yeah, pretty deluxe, pretty deluxe. I mean, again, these this is a deluxe release um, figure. Uh, I wanna say, I don't know. It, it was like maybe $50, $50 or so, um, which is, you know, approximately the cost of two and a half uh, Marvel Legends. But in terms of size and scale, I mean, uh, Thanos is an oversized Marvel Legend himself. And you can see, technically speaking, MODOK is a little bit larger than Thanos. Um, especially from like a... <laughs> it does look like he's shooting a nasty um, either bloody diarrhea or just horrible fart. Um, I do apologize. This is a family stream. Um, you got that alternate portrait, the alternate hands. I mean, it's a pretty, pretty comprehensive release. Uh, I think even people that were kind of of the opinion that you were never going to be able to outdo the, uh, toy biz release of MODOK or just that modern Hasbro would not be willing to sink as much money as it would take into developing a, uh, a MODOK that was better than the original release. Um, 
I think a lot of the haters have been kind of proven wrong, which is great. Um, I mean, he's a fantastic figure. And as somebody that never actually finished that build a figure of the original Modoc, um, a welcome addition to the, uh, to the Marvel legends family. Um, it's a little rundown shot of all of the friends that we've met and made today. I would say, obviously, Marvel's Katie, portrayed by, I'm sure, the very talented Aquafina, is uh, far and away the most boring out of the four that I opened, um, including its uh, her weird little faceless um, friend in the back. Uh, the Thanos is very nice, uh, nice, hefty, has good good solid feel uh same for modok um and then again i think that she actually ended up looking a little bit better than what i originally anticipated as far as for um uh firestar here uh these are all kind of like your big in the 70s characters so it's a uh, sort of a 70s revival kind of thing um but they're all pretty good pretty good uh again the modok i think um if you want a big, goofy, crazy, Kirby-style villain, uh, you can't can't do any better than that. They had announced uh, several different Marvel Legends since the last time that I had streamed, uh, including a nice $70 set of uh, a really large-looking Ironmonger. So it's, it's very cool, honestly, to see that Hasbro is kind of going out on a limb and making some of these things that maybe in the past were viewed as impractical or, uh, you know, not profitable in order to produce. Um, I, I'm curious. I, well, I mean, I guess you can kind of get an idea of the scale of the Ironmonger. The Ironmonger from the uh, movie, um, the one that they had announced, looks pretty cool. I don't know if I'm going to get it because $70 is quite an investment. And I've really kind of been trying to scale back on, uh, in particular, getting the ones from the movies, because I'm just not sure that I'm going to be interested in collecting a lot of the live action ones anymore. I say that, but I did pre-order that um, redone Infinity War Captain America. Um, cause I, thought he, I thought it looked good. I mean, the head sculpt looks pretty decent. And then uh, lately, I don't know what it is, but Hasbro has actually been... Some of the promo images, um, the actual production toys, to me, are looking a lot better uh, than even what the promos did. So um, I think right now Hasbro's doing pretty good. Um, in a few months' time, I will have uh, I will have their absurdly, obscenely huge Sentinel in my possession, uh, and I will be highly debating. If I'm planning on selling mine, I have an awful confession. I actually bought two. Um, I might sell the second one. We'll see. I'm one of those people contributing to the problem. But hey, I helped get it funded, right? So, um, some other cool Marvel stuff recently. Lego did officially reveal the uh, deluxe Daily Bugle set. Um, it's not maybe the most exciting looking building, but it comes with 25 mini figures, which is basically like two full collectible minifigure waves, which is wild to me. Um, and it has Daredevil. Uh, I'm excited about that. Daredevil, Black Cat. I mean, they, they included a lot of cool, fun characters. Um, so of course I bought it, even though it has an obscene price tag, uh, $299 USD. Ugh. There's a couple other upcoming Lego sets that I'm very interested in getting. Um, and for anybody that is still waiting for me to build Winnie the Pooh, I haven't done it yet. So I haven't built Winnie the Pooh. I can still do it on stream. I'll get around to it at some point. Um, but as far as the things that I was planning on opening tonight, you know, we're coming up on that hour mark. Um, I don't think I'm going to open anything else right now. Um, I did get another gift from my kind friend, the same friend that had uh, assisted me in getting this spiffy new microphone set up. Uh, but I, I don't think I'm going to open it, but I can just show it um, on stream. 
here. This is the uh, Mafex into the Spider Verse Miles Morales. Um, I think this was a pretty significantly delayed release. Um, but I'm not going to open that right now. Those kind of toys are pretty finicky. Um, and I don't feel like fussing with all those small parts. And we're, like I said, coming up on that hour. Um, my main thing that I wanted to open up was that MODOK. And I am glad to finally get Mr. Tijanos himself out of the, uh, out of the little cardboard prison that he's been in for a little while now. Um, because it's always exciting that I can get, <laughs> that I can get these, uh, get these guys out of the boxes and then, uh, free up some shelf space. Um, not sure how I'll be displaying these guys. Who knows? I need more shelves. Um, but yeah, other than that, I think we're pretty well set for right now. Uh, I am hoping to get back into a regular routine of streaming. I still need to do a special um, card opening stream with my wife. Um, we had bought a box of Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles trading cards, and we got a binder to put them in. And so look forward to that um, as, as maybe a Turtle Fest revival in the near future. We'll see. We'll see. At the very least, I want to try and get back to the weekly um, installments of this. And then um, maybe with the occasional special like Lego build stream uh, to supplement here and there. Maybe I could do a multi-part stream of that Daily Bugle Lego set when it comes out. And um, I don't know, just bore people by chatting while I'm building that thing that's going to take forever. Um, but yeah, uh, other than that, I think we're done for tonight. So thank you everybody for tuning in. I always appreciate it. I think Ryan may have been my only viewer, but to all my people that are on, um, video on demand, um, I'll catch you next time. And thanks always for tuning in to Matt opens toys. Love y'all and bye.